All right, so in our last tutorial, we finally added monsters. So G represents goblin, X spider. Somewhere there's a troll floating around. We just haven't got to that level yet. Okay, but these monsters aren't doing anything. So let's start working on their movement. But before we do that, uh, a bit of housekeeping here. I made a bit of a mistake earlier. We made for both monster and player, we put we did a position, but we didn't make those pointers. And now that I'm, th I've thought up some of the the functions that we need. Uh, we want to change both of those in our rogue.h to uh, position star position. So to make those pointers, which means when we create these players and monsters, we're gonna have to change a couple things. So going back to modify some code, not always the funnest, but it shouldn't take too long. So we now have the malloc, both positions. Of course, that's gonna be size of position. And then we have to change these dots to whatever these are. And we have to do that in the entire file, pretty much. And even down here, we still have to do that. So for these guys, so if we'd done it right the first time, we wouldn't be doing this now, but eh, you know, I had a good intent um, down here too. So if there's any more of those, oh wait, here we go, yeah, more down here. I mean, we can always let the compiler find them. So if we miss a couple, it's it's no big deal. We'll be told it'll error. But it will make things a little easier and just more consistent too. So all right, that's all of them for player. Now for monster as well. This one should be a little easier. I think we can just do everything in our set starting position. So we can just do monster, position equals malloc. Here come the police again. Size of position, nope. I swear I didn't do it, I swear. Um, okay. Nope. So again, all the dots need to be replaced. Thankfully, there's not too many of them. Okay, and why don't we just see that that compiles? Uh, so monster 105. Did we not change the... Uh... No, we did. 105, that's weird. Oh, right here, those don't get changed. Okay, so we don't actually change the pos the room position at this point, is, it's not a pointer, so don't. Don't change that. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so it's compiling now. Okay, so we wanna move the monsters now. Now, remember, we have these two different types of pathfinding. We have seeking and we have random. So we're just gonna focus on seeking in this tutorial. So let's just put, write a function down here and we're gonna call it path finding seek. And it will return int on success and it will take in a level pointer, level star level. Uh, so that's one. Oh, we're also going to just write a random. Sorry, no. This is not, yeah, okay. We're also going to write a move monsters function. So move monsters. And I'll return int. 
it's going to take in as its argument a level pointer, level star level. And what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all the monsters in the level. So int x as a counter, create a for loop. And for x equals 0, x is less than the level number of monsters. So it's going to go through every single monster that's in the level, x plus plus. And what it's going to do is it's going to say if level monsters, remember we have an array of monsters, and then x, so the current monster that we're looking at, and we're going to say pathfinding, so we're going to say if this pathfinding variable is equal to 1, well then that's going to be random, random, else it's going to be this seek uh, It's going to be the, the seeking algorithm that we'll have. Okay, so in that case, we're going to call this pathfinding seek. And what it's going to take in is it's going to take a, it's going to take two positions. So the first position is going to be the monsters position. So that's going to be this here position. And then the second argument is going to be the user's position because the monster is going to be moving closer to the user at every step. So level user position. Okay, so then that means that we're going to have two positions. Position star, and we're going to call this one start. And then the other position pointer we'll call destination destination. Okay, now basically we want at each step the monster to move closer to the user. But if we go to our room.c connect doors function, all this logic here is basically the same. So we're just going to copy and paste it. And we're going to yeah, just paste it into this pathfinding seek function. Originally, I was going to try and repurpose that function to make it work, but it was just getting way too confusing. It would have taken way too much time, so we're just gonna we're just gonna take what we need, which is just basically the if statements. Uh, shift tab this to go one to the left. Uh, so we're just gonna take what we need from these if statements and basically uh, basically uh, yeah, it'll work fine. Okay, so we don't need any of this previous stuff. So just get rid of those. Get rid of these. Do, do, do. Now this else statement is completely useless as well for, to us. So we can get rid of this. And that means that this else if becomes our else. So we can get rid of that. And then we're just going to... Uh, it's just returned one, I guess. Okay, now in our original function, we're looking for a space is basically our free free spot that we can move into. But uh, now what, oh, okay, it's not gonna run. But now what we want is we only want the monsters moving on the floor in the room that they're in. So basically we don't want them going into doors or hallways or ceilings or walls, anything like that. We just want them walking on the dots. So if you remember the logic from this function, I know it was a while ago, we spent some, some good time on it. Basically this says, this and and move inch, basically it says if if it's a space, then we can't go there. So we're, we're gonna just change that to dot. So if it's a dot, we don't go there. Um, which, you know, actually makes me think uh, this could cause some problems here. Yeah, so we're actually going to change that back to an else if. Yeah, okay, so we, need, we do need that else if. So just um, backing up here, control Z, control Z. Okay, good. Okay, so we will still, uh, 
we'll still use that and then we'll just have an else that does nothing it'll just return I don't know whatever it's st it still worked fine so let's we'll return one return one or I guess we can just do nothing right do nothing okay Okay, all right, so yeah, change all these spaces to dots because those are the free squares. Now we also want to change this temp.x. It's basically going to become our start. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to view, no, find, we're going to do replace. We're going to replace temp dot with start and then the, the pointer symbol there. Okay, so we're just gonna say, find, replace, 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 and just keep going until they're all gone. So that's a little bit less time than uh, if we had typed it. And then we do the same thing with door two, though it's not as big a deal because there's not as many of them with destination so find and then replace and that should be it and then this will automatically modify the monsters position to just be a little bit closer so we'll call this and then the reason why we point we change these uh, positions to pointers is because when we modify them in here they get modified up here so what we can do is we can do uh, move print w and we're going to print this position so level x position y and x okay now remember remember when we uh, originally print our uh, monster we have to do this whole char buffer thing what we're actually going to do is we're just going to add that instead of calling sprintf, we're going to go to our struct in rogue.h and we're going to add a string of characters. So we'll just call it string and we can make it, I think two should be fine. And then we're going to, in our monster.c, we're basically going to take this um let's see create monster so there's your symbol there so what we're just going to do is we're going to use sprintf and the destination will be new monster that string that we just declared character and then well monster symbol or symbol okay so now whenever we want to print the monster we can just use this we don't have to use the buffer character whoops buffer character thing anymore because I think that would just be annoying. Let's let's actually uh, let's get rid of that. And so instead of buffer, it's going to be new monster string. And that just, to me, it just makes sense. Instead of whenever we want to print a monster, converting it, we're just gonna we're gonna start it out uh, a version as a string. Okay, so where were we here? Uh, so yeah, move print w here in our move monsters function, and we're gonna print the new monster string. But then remember the monster's also moving, so we're gonna want to put something here as well. But let's let's first let's first get this running. Okay, so we need to call this function too. So we're gonna do that in our move monsters, and we'll just do it after check position move monsters, and remember it takes a level. Now, I don't think we've added this to our rogue.h, so let's do that. So int move monster. This will be in our monster functions. Need to move monster and uh, pathfinding seek. We'll go there as well. So let's see if this runs. Clear it, make it fix there. So in 108 monsters.c 108 so this uh, this should be monster instead of new monster try again 
monster123 level has no member named user. Do we call it player? Oh, we didn't do that yet either. Okay, so in our main, uh, here we're calling user player setup. We're actually going to copy that and get rid of it. And in our create level function, which is level.c, we're going to uh, we're gonna add this right here. So new level, user equals player setup. So we've just moved that out of our main.c. And then that means we have to add it to our level. So remember, we haven't yet declared the struct player, the type def. So we need to first, we're going to say it's going to be a struct. Oh, that didn't work. So struct player star user. Uh, if we didn't have this struct here, C would say, I don't know what a player is. But now we're saying player is just a struct and it's defined down here. Okay, so clear make in monster or dot C one two four. Again, I think we just copy and pasted our uh, yeah. So that's monster. No, this is level monster X. Oh, and there it's working. Okay, so up here we have our goblin. Now remember, spiders are random moving, so they shouldn't be affected by what we just coded. So let's see if this is working. When we move our player by using WASD, the goblin should move closer to us. Let's see if it works. Nope, it doesn't work. Do, 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 do. Okay, so why is that? Okay, so the problem why it wasn't working was I was actually editing the wrong main.c. So it should actually be working for you. Should at least compile. So when you compile it, you get to here, you try and move and it's seg faults. Okay, so file, open tab, and then hit make clean to delete that rogue file. Okay, so the problem here is user is now stored in level user. So we don't actually even want this up here. So get rid of that. And then this is also level user. So save that, clear, make, and there we can see that the monster is moving. Okay, but one other thing we wanna do is before we move the monster, we wanna replace wherever he was standing with a floor piece dot. So there we go. And then uh, just one more thing is let's move the cursor back to where the user is. So move uh, level user y level user x and rerun that position 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 okay try that there we go so where's a goblin where's a goblin there's a goblin a couple goblins so you can see they just kind of always move closer to where the uh, the user is. Now we're going to run into a problem where we can't actually get into the room anymore. Because they just kind of block us. So we'll um, what we're going to do to fix that is we're going to make it so that when the user is not in that room, the goblin's going to be moving around randomly. I mean, obviously, eventually combat will happen where you can kill the monster and get into the room but just having him waiting by the door would be a little weird so we'll work on the random pathfinding in our next video